Guy Carlton, 1st Baron Dorchester, K.B., known between 1776 and 1786 as Sir Guy Carlton, was an Anglo-Irish soldier and administrator. He twice served as governor of the province of Quebec, from 1768 to 1778, concurrently serving as governor-general of British North America in that time, and again from 1785 to 1795. The title Baron Dorchester was created on 21 August 1786. He commanded British troops in the American War of Independence first leading the defense of Quebec during the 1775 rebel invasion and the 1776 counter-offensive that drove the rebels from the province. In 1782 and 1783 he led as the commander-in-chief of all British forces in North America. In this capacity he was notable for carrying out the Crown's promise of freedom to slaves who joined the British and he oversaw the evacuation of British forces, loyalists and more than 3,000 freedmen from New York in 1783 to transport him to a British colony. The military and political career of his younger brother, Thomas Carlton, was interwoven with his own, and Thomas served under him in the Canada's early career. Guy Carlton was born to a Protestant military family that had lived in Ireland since the 17th century and was one of two brothers that served in the British military. He also had a sister Connolly Crawford. When he was 14 his father, Christopher Carlton died, and his mother Catherine Carlton remarried Reverend Thomas Skelton. He received a limited education. During this period he became a friend of James Wolfe. He may have served with Wolfe at the Battle of Culloden during the Jacobite Rebellion. Two of his brothers, William and Thomas, also joined the British Army. In 1740 the War of the Austrian Succession had broken out in Europe. Despite British troops having been engaged on the European continent since 1742, it was not until 1747 that Carlton and his regiment were dispatched to Flanders. They fought the French, but were unable to prevent the fall of bergen op Zoom, a major Dutch fortress, and the war was brought to a halt by an armistice. In 1748 the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle was signed and Carlton returned to Britain. He was frustrated to still only be a lieutenant, and believed his opportunities of advancement would be limited with the end of the war. In 1751 he joined the First Foot Guards and in 1752 was promoted to captain. His career received a major boost when he was chosen, at the suggestion of Wolfe, to act as a guide to the Duke of Richmond during a tour of the battlefields of the recent war. Richmond would become an influential patron to Carlton. Seven Years' War Germany in 1757 was made a lieutenant colonel and served as part of the army of observation made up of German troops designed to protect Hanover from French invasion. The army was forced to retreat following the Battle of Hasenbeck and eventually concluded the Convention of Kloster Zeven taking him out of the war. After the convention was signed Carlton returned to Britain. In 1758 he was made the lieutenant colonel of the newly formed 72nd Regiment of Foot. James Wolfe selected Carlton as his aide in the 1758 attack on Louisbourg. King George II declined to make this appointment possibly because of negative comments he made about the soldiers of Hanover during his service on the continent. For some time he was unable to gain active position, until he was sent back to Germany to serve as an aide-de-camp to Duke Ferdinand of Brunswick. Canada in December 1758 Wolf, now a major general was given command of the upcoming campaign against the city of Quebec, and he selected Carlton as his quartermaster general. King George refused to make this appointment also until Lord Ligonier talked to the king about the matter and the king changed his mind. When Lieutenant Colonel Carlton arrived in Halifax he assumed command of 600 grenadiers. He was with the British forces when they arrived at Quebec in June 1759. Carlton was responsible for the provisioning of the army and also acting as an engineer supervising the placement of cannon. Carlton received a head wound during the Battle of the Plains of Abraham and he returned to England after the battle in October 1759. 
France and Havana on 29 March 1761. As the Lieutenant Colonel of 72nd Regiment of Foot he took part in the attack on Belle Isle, an island of the coast of the northern part of the Bay of Biscay, 10 miles off the coast of France. Carlton led an attack on the French but was seriously wounded and prevented from taking any further part in the fighting. After four weeks of fighting, the British gained complete control of the island. He was made colonel in 1762 and took part in the British expedition against Cuba, which also included Richard Montgomery who went on to oppose him in 1775. On the 22nd of July, he was wounded leading an attack on a Spanish outpost. In 1764 he transferred to the 93rd Regiment of Foot, Governor of Quebec. On 7 April 1766, Carlton was named Acting Lieutenant Governor and Administrator of Quebec with James Murray officially in charge. He arrived in Quebec on the 22nd of September 1766. As Carlton had no experience in public affairs and came from a politically insignificant family, his appointment is unusual and was possibly a surprise to him. One connection may have been due to the Duke of Richmond, who in 1766 been made Secretary of State for the North American colonies. Fourteen years earlier, Carlton had tutored the Duke. The Duke was the colonel of the 72nd Regiment of Foot, while Carlton was its lieutenant colonel. He appointed Carlton as commander-in-chief of all troops stationed in Quebec. The government consisted of a governor, a council, and an assembly. The governor could veto any action of the council. But London had also given Carlton instructions that all of his actions required the approval of the council. Most officials of the province at this time did not receive a salary and received their income through fees they charged for their services. Carlton tried to replace this system with one in which the officials received a regular salary, but this position was never supported in London. When Carlton renounced his own fees, Murray was furious. After Murray resigned his position, Carlton was appointed Captain General and Governor-in-Chief on 12 April 1768. Carlton took the oath of office on 1 November 1768. On 9 August 1770 he sailed for England for what he thought was a few months' consultation on issues related to the integration of Quebec into the British system. During his absence, Hector Theophilus de Cramahe, the lieutenant governor, around the provincial government, with the aid of the first chief justice, William Hay, and the attorney general, Francis Marceres. The British merchants of Quebec, many of whom had become disaffected to the colonial administration under Murray, were, at least initially, of good will. The merchants would later be agent for e.g. the Quebec Act of 1774 and finally the partition of the two Canadas in the Constitutional Act of 1791. Marriage and Family On the 22nd of May 1772, at the age of nearly 48, Carlton married Lady Maria Howard, 29 years his junior, she was the daughter of Thomas Howard, 2nd Earl of Effingham. Although the barony is now extinct, they had issue. Guy born 1773 died lieutenant with the Third Guards in 1793. Thomas born 1774 first, a royal dragoons killed at Cato 1794. Christopher born 1775 died lieutenant colonel with the 25th dragoons at Madras 1806. Maria, wife of William Order Powlett, second Baron Bolton, the Bolton Baronetcy has flourished. William born 1778 died 1780. Lancelot born 1779 died 1780. George born 1781 wounded at Badajoz, slain lieutenant colonel at the siege of Bergen op Zoom, carrying the sword his father had worn there 66 years earlier. Charles born 1786 Royal Navy killed HMS Phoebe 1799. Dudley born 1790 Captain 4th, Dragoons died 1820. Richard, born 1792, Rector of Nately Skewers. Francis, wife of Rev. John Order, later career. 
Carlton was promoted to Major General on 25 May 1772. While he was in London, the Parliament passed the Quebec Act of 1774, based upon his recommendations. It determined how the province was to be administered and was part of a continuing effort to respect some French traditions while ensuring rights of citizens as understood by the Kingdom of Great Britain. Carlton and Maria returned to Quebec on 18 September 1774, where he began implementing the provisions of the Act. While the clergy and the seigneurs were happy with provisions favourable to them, British merchants and migrants from the 13 colonies objected to a number of the provisions, which they thought were undemocratic and pro-Catholic. Many of the habitants were unhappy with the provisions reinstating the tithe in support of the Catholic Church, as well as seigneurial obligations such as the Corvée. In late 1774, the First Continental Congress sent letters to Montreal denouncing the Quebec Act for being undemocratic and for promoting Catholicism by allowing Catholics to hold civil service positions and reinstating the tithe. John Brown, an agent for the Boston Committee of Correspondence, arrived in Montreal in early 1775 as part of an effort to persuade citizens to send delegates to the Second Continental Congress, scheduled to meet in May 1775. Carlton, while aware of this activity, did nothing to prevent it, beyond discouraging publication of the congressional letter in the province's only newspaper, American War of Independence. Defense of Canada Carlton received notice of the start of the rebellion in May 1775, soon followed by the news of the rebel capture of Fort Ticonderoga and Fort Crown Point and the raid on Fort St. John. As he had previously sent two of his regiments to Boston, he had only about 800 regular soldiers left in Quebec. His attempts to raise a militia met with limited success at first, as neither the ethnic French nor the English residents were willing to join. Area Indians were willing to fight on the British side, and the Crown wanted them to do so. But Carlton turned their offer down because he feared the Indians attacking non-combatants. For the same reason, he limited Guy Johnson and his Iroquois allies, who had come to Quebec from New York, to operating only in Quebec. During the summer of 1775, Carlton directed the preparation of provincial defences, which were focused on Fort St. John. In September, the Continental Army began its invasion and besieged the fort. When it fell in November, Carlton was forced to flee from Montreal to Quebec City, escaping capture by disguising himself as a commoner. In December 1775 he directed the city's defences in the Battle of Quebec and the ensuing siege, which was broken by the arrival of British troops in May 1776 under command of John Burgoyne, who was appointed second in command. Carlton's younger brother Thomas was part of the relief effort. Guy Carlton launched a counter-offensive against the rebels, which included repelling an attempted attack on Trois-Rivières. In June 1776, he was appointed a Knight of the Bath. The next month Carlton commanded British naval forces on the Richelieu River, culminating in the Battle of Valkyr Island on Lake Champlain in October 1776 against a rebel fleet led by General Benedict Arnold. The British, with a significantly superior fleet, won a decisive victory, destroying or capturing most of the rebel fleet but the delay prevented Carlton from continuing on to capture Fort Ticonderoga that year. His brother Thomas and nephew Christopher both served on his staff during the campaign. The morning following the battle, a small island in Lake Champlain was named Carlton's Prize, perhaps to Carlton's embarrassment at the time. In 1777, command of the major northern expedition to divide the rebel colonies was given to General Burgoyne. Upset that he had not been given its command, Carlton asked to be recalled. He was replaced as governor and military commander of Quebec in 1778 by Frederick Haldimand and returned to England. In 1780 he was appointed by Prime Minister Lord North to a commission investigating public finances. 
This post he held until 1782, when General Sir Henry Clinton was recalled in the aftermath of the 1781 surrender at Yorktown. Carlton was appointed to replace Clinton as a military commander-in-chief of the war effort. Evacuation of New York in August 1783, Carlton was informed that Great Britain would grant the United States its independence. With his exit from New York imminent, Carlton asked to be relieved of his command. With this news, loyalists began an exodus from the 13 colonies and Carlton did his best to have them resettled outside the United States. At a meeting with George Washington, among others, to arrange for the implementation of those parts of the Treaty of Paris relating to the evacuation of New York City. Then commanded by Carlton and still occupied by the British Army, many loyalists and former slaves, Carlton refused to deliver over the human property to the Americans at the time of the British evacuation. Instead, he proposed a registry so that the owners might eventually be paid for the slaves who were entitled to their freedom by British proclamation and promises, so Guy noted that nothing could be changed in any articles that were inconsistent with prior policies or national honour. He added that the only mode was to pay for the Negroes, in which case justice was done to all, the former slaves and the owners. Carlton said that it would be a breach of faith not to honour the British policy of liberty to the Negro and declared that if removing them proved to be an infraction of the treaty, then compensation would have to be paid by the British government. To provide for such a contingency, he had a register kept of all Negroes who left, called the Book of Negroes, entering their names, ages, occupations, and names of their former masters. The Americans agreed to this but as far as can be determined, the Crown never paid compensation. The British transported about 3,000 freedmen and other loyalists to Nova Scotia for resettlement. As the colony struggled, some of the freedmen later chose in the early 1790s to go to Freetown, Sierra Leone, where the British set up a new colony, which included the Black Paul from London, remain on duty until every man, woman and child who wanted to leave the United States he safely moved to British soil. Washington disagreed with Sir Guy's actions and wrote, the measure is totally different from the letter and spirit of the treaty but waiving the specialty of the point. Leaving this decision to our respective sovereigns I find it my duty to signify my readiness in conjunction with you to enter into agreements, or take any measures which may be deemed expedient to prevent the future carrying away any Negroes or other property of the American people. On 28 November the evacuation was finished, and Carlton returned to England. John Campbell of Stracker succeeded him as Commander-in-Chief, North America, although the post was then much reduced in scope. Post-war years Upon his return to England Carlton recommended the creation of a position of Governor-General of all the provinces in British North America. Instead he was appointed Governor-in-Chief, with simultaneous appointments as Governor of Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and St. John's Island. He arrived in Quebec on 23 October 1786. His position as Governor-in-Chief was mostly ignored. He found quickly that his authority in any of the provinces other than Quebec was effective only while he was present in person. He was raised to the peerage in August 1786 his Lord Dorchester, Baron of Dorchester in the county of Oxford. The Constitutional Act of 1791 split the large territory of Quebec into Upper and Lower Canada corresponding roughly to areas settled by ethnic British and ethnic French, respectively. Sir Lord Clark was named as the Lieutenant Governor of Lower Canada and John Graves Simcoe the Lieutenant Governor of Upper Canada. In August 1791 Carlton left for Britain and on 7 February 1792 took his seat in the House of Lords. He left for Canada again on 18 August 1793 to resume his duties there. His replacement, Robert Prescott, arrived in May 1796. 
On the 9th of July 1796, Carlton sailed from Canada to Britain, never to return. In retirement, Carlton lived mostly at Greywell Hill, adjoining Nately Skewers, in Hampshire. After about 1805 he moved to Stubbings House at Birchett's Green, near Maidenhead, in Berkshire. On 10 November 1808, he died suddenly at Stubbings. He was buried in the parish church of St. Swithin's, Nately Skewers. Honours and Legacy. He was honoured by numerous places and educational institutions named for him. HMCS Carlton, a Canadian Forces Naval Reserve Division in Ottawa. Carlton University in Ottawa. The Carlton, Halifax, Nova Scotia. Carlton, Nova Scotia. Carlton Village, Nova Scotia. Dorchester Boulevard, a major thoroughfare in Montreal since renamed René Lovesque Boulevard. Dorchester Square in downtown Montreal, Dorchester Island and the parish and town of Dorchester, all of New Brunswick, Carlton Street in downtown Toronto St. John, New Brunswick Yarmouth, Nova Scotia Fredericton, New Brunswick Street, Andrews, New Brunswick Musamine, Saskatchewan, Rue Dorchester, a thoroughfare in Quebec City, Old Carlton County Courthouse, Upper Woodstock, New Brunswick, Carlton Place, a town in eastern Ontario, Carlton County, New Brunswick, Carlton County, Ontario, that became the region of Ottawa Carlton, and then the city of Ottawa with amalgamation in 2001. Carlton-sur-Mer, Quebec, a town on the north shore of Bay de Chalas, Guysborough County, Nova Scotia. Guy's Restaurant, in his birthplace of Strabane, is also named after Carlton. The restaurant was formerly known as the Carlton Club, Lord Dorchester High School in Dorchester, Ontario, Sogai Carlton Secondary School in Ottawa, Sogai Carlton Elementary School in Vancouver, B.C. Carlton is mentioned in a Fort St. John plaque erected in 1926 by Historic Sites and Monuments Board of Canada at the Royal Military College, St. John. Constructed in 1743 by M. Durrelli Y under orders from Governor Largalis on the air. This post was for all the military expeditions towards Lake Champlain. In August 31, 1760, Commandant de Roquimari had it blown up in accordance with orders from the Governor de Vaudreuil in order to prevent its falling into the hands of the English, rebuilt by Governor Carlton in 1773. During the same year, under the command of Major Charles Preston of the 26th Regiment, it withstood a 45-day siege by the American troops commanded by General Montgomery. Carlton Island, part of the Thousand Islands, is near the Royal Military College of Canada. The Governor of Upper Canada, John Graves Simcoe, named Wolf Island in General James Wolfe's honour in 1792. The surrounding islands bear the names of Wolfe's generals. Howe, Carlton, Amherst and Gage. The island was ceded to the Americans in 1794 as part of Jay's Treaty. Via Rail Canada has a man a sleeping car named after Sir Guy Carlton in his honour and there is a plaque inside the rail car explaining his exploits. The first railroad in Canada, the Champlain and St. Lawrence Railroad had its first locomotive named Dorchester. Carlton Point, a short-lived Loyalist settlement on Abaco Island, Bahamas, was named for him.